بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد رب شرح لي صدر يسلي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي We begin with lesson number 12 from Surah Tawbah The ayat we will cover inshallah بإذن الله تعالى Ayat number 90 what I began reciting Ayat number 90 to ayah number 106. And those ayat are really very important because in the past lessons we were focusing on the hypocrites of al Madina, what uh, their condition was, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so displeased with them, whether uh, the Prophet would ask for forgiveness for them or not. Allah had uh, already decided there's no forgiveness for them. Allah had put a stamp on their hearts and Allah is going to punish them. Now this ayah, ayah number 90, and this discourse discusses another type of munafiqs. Not the munafiqs of al Madina, rather the A'rab, the munafiq, the desert Arabs, the Bedouins who lived around Medina and in the desert, not in the towns and cities. So this discourse will be on that, inshaAllah ta'ala. وَجَاءَ الْمُعَذِّرُونَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ لِيُؤْذَنَ لَهُمْ وَقَعَدَ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ So there are two types of munafiqeen. Up until now, the munafiqeen that were mentioned in the previous ayah were the munafiqeen of al Madina, And now Allah mentions the munafiqeen from the Arab, from the A'rab, the word used in the Qur'an here in this ayah, Al-A'rab, those are the Bedouin Arabs. The desert Arabs. And also from among the desert Arabs, they came to beg for permission. To ask for permission and ask for leave. So they don't have to join the expedition to Tabuk. The Prophet ﷺ made it compulsory upon all believers, not only in Mecca and in Medina by that time. Muslims were everywhere. Remember, this is the last expedition. The Hudaybiyah already taken place. The conquest of Mecca had taken place. So Islam was established. And all Muslims everywhere, it had become compulsory upon all of them to join the expedition. So the previous ayat talked about the munafiqeen of al Madina who resisted, did not want to go, gave lame excuses and so on and so forth. And now it's the Bedouin desert Arabs from around al Madina and around Arabia who became Muslims. And now they began giving the Prophet ﷺ excuses to not go with him on that expedition. So, وَجَاءَ الْمُعَذِّرُونَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ لِيُؤْذَنَ لَهُمْ So that a permission can be given to them by the Prophet. وَقَعَدَ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ So not to go on this expedition and they held back and lied to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. سَيُصِيبُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Soon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will afflict those who committed kufr from among them, the A'rab. Kufr, now here it's not the legal kufr. This is not what is being talked about. But rather the kufr that they rejected to join the Prophet ﷺ. And then for them will be a very painful torment. And we shall find, just like the munafiqeen in Medina, they too eventually were not only munafiqs, but worse than that. They were kuffar in, in the sense that they really disbelieved in Allah and in His Messenger. So they will have سَيُصِيبُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will afflict those who committed this type of kufr, a very painful torment. لَيْسَ عَلَى الضُّعَفَاءِ وَلَا عَلَى الْمَرْضَى وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ حَرَجٍ There is no blame. On the du'afa, the weak. وَلَا عَلَى الْمَرْضَى And those who are sick, those who are ill, they have a legitimate excuse. They cannot go. They want to go. Some of them are very weak, frail elders, but others were sick. 
And there is no blame on those who cannot find anything to contribute in order to go. They have no means at all. They are not resourceful like these other aghniya, the rich from among the community who are able to spend, who are able to secure an animal, to ride for the expedition. إِذَا نَصَحُوا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ As long as uh, they are sincere in their excuses to Allah and His Messenger. لَيْسَ عَلَى الضُّعَفَاءِ وَلَا عَلَى الْمَرْضَى So those are the ones, uh, some of the people who are weak and they are unable to go because of sickness or illness. So they have uh, no blame. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no blame on them. إِذَا نَصَحُوا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ As long as they are sincere to Allah and His Messenger. Now, the, His Messenger would not know, obviously, because uh, the Messenger of Allah cannot look into their hearts. Only Allah knows. And on occasions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will inform His Messenger about the, what's in the hearts of some of those disbelievers and also the munafiqeen. But in general, he cannot. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of uh, what is in their hearts. إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِعِبَادِهِ خَبِيرًا بَصِيرًا Indeed, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, with his servants, he knows everything. He is khabir, he is well aware of what they're up to, what they think, uh, what's in their hearts, and he's, he sees what they do. وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ حَرَجٌ إِذَا نَصَحُوا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ مَا عَلَى الْمُحْسِنِينَ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ وَاللَّهُ وَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And on such muhsineen, on such good doers, who purify themselves and reach this level of ihsan, who want to go but are unable to go, there is no blame. Allah is ghafoor, wallahu ghafoor rahim Indeed, Allah is forgiving, He is merciful. وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا أَتَوْكَ لِتَحْمِلَهُمْ And in the same way, there is no blame on those who came to you so you may provide them with some means of transportation. They don't have any animals to ride. They don't have the means to secure transportation to that expedition, to the place where they're going. So there is no blame on them as well. قُلْتَ لَا أَجِدُ مَا أَحْمِلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ And you said, O Prophet, to them, I don't have any means for you. I have what I have, and I don't have anything that could help you. So they are sincere, they want to go, but they are unable to because they didn't have the means. So Allah said there is no blame on them either. تَوَلَّوْا وَأَعْيُنُهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ they turned away from the Prophet. They turned around and went back while their eyes are full of tears. They, they, they're crying. They really want to go. They're so sincere. They want to go, but they are unable to go. That's how it affected them. <laughs> Due to the grief, because they can't find anything to spend. They don't have resources, so they are not to be blamed. Allah is not going to blame such people. Allah will actually, on the basis of their intention, He will reward them. <inaudible> All actions are but with the intention. If you intend to do something and you can't do it, Allah will reward you on that basis. So their rewards is with Allah. إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَسْتَأْذِنُونَكَ وَهُمْ أَغْنِيَاءَ The blame lies on those who are seeking permission from you while they are rich. They have the means to go. They are rich. They have resources. Allah blessed them with wealth, with properties. They can arrange for mounts. They can arrange for ration. They can arrange for whatever they need on their trip, on their journey, on that expedition. They can spend to get more weapons and so on and so forth, raise funds for this uh, war. 
رضوا بأن يكونوا مع الخوالف. On the other hand, they were very happy. They preferred to stay back with the khawalif. Khawalif are an-nisa, those women who don't go. They stay back. They are women. They are not required to fight. There's a difference between al-mukhallafin and khawalif. Al-mukhallafin, those who stayed back purposely. But at the same time, we have the word al-khawalif. Those are the women who stayed back because they're not required to go and fight. رضوا بأن يكونوا مع الخوالف. They loved to be with those women who were left behind. وطبع الله على قلوبهم فهم لا يعلمون. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a stamp on their hearts. That is because they can't understand. They don't understand. They have no knowledge. You know, in terms of uh, worldly affairs, they are very wise. They know how to make money. They know how to talk. But this is not the real wisdom. It will be more wise to give what you have to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, it would be more wise to know if one lays his life for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his sake, he will die as a shaheed. So if he dies as a shaheed, as a martyr, if they are wise, they will enjoy everything immediately. Immediately, you know, the shuhada in Islam, those who die in the battlefield for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're not dead. They're not going to experience the barzakh, you know, the, the, the grave. Because when they die, the angels take them immediately. They go to heaven. They go to paradise. And they enjoy everything Allah had prepared for them. They will be provided for everything. They will have everything there. And this is why we have uh, in so many places in the Quran, for example, we study in Surah Al-Baqarah, Never think and say that those who die in the path of Allah are dead. They're not dead like ordinary people who die earthly death, uh, if you know what I mean, in their sleep or whatever the case may be, and are buried in the, in the ground going through this uh, phase of al-barzakh. No, they're not the same. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ They are indeed alive, but you cannot perceive that. In Surah Al-Imran, we studied that as well. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Never think. Those who die in the path of Allah, أَمْوَاتًا as dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ They are living. They are with their Lord. They are being provided for. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهِ They are so happy with that which Allah has given them. Paradise. مَنْ فَضْلِهِ Out of His grace. وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحِقُوا بِهِمْ And they have the good news of those who will follow them. مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ أَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ No grief, no anxiety. Nothing is going to happen to them on the day of resurrection, when everybody will stand up, come out of the grave, fearful, full of anxiety, what is going to happen to us? Some of the people will be drowning from the fear and the sweat that they will develop up to their ankles, some up to their knees, some up to their waist, and some up to their necks. This is a reality. These people don't have to go through this. Ala khawfun alayhim. There shall be no fear upon them. They will never go through this anxiety other people will go through. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, never think that they are dead. They are indeed alive and they are being provided for. Very happy with that which Allah has given them. So those al-mu'adhirun or the munafiqs of al-Madinah, if they were only wise to understand that, had we gone with the Prophet on this expedition, even if we had to lay down our lives, even if we die, it is the best thing to do. Shahada fi sabilillah is the highest martaba. So they didn't know. Fahum la ya'lamun. They don't understand. They don't know. Ya'tadhiruna ilaykum idha raja'atum ilayhim. When you return back, you know, from the expedition, you will find them coming to you 
giving you excuses. They will tell you why they did not go. Plural, if you all, all of you come back. So they will give their excuses, the same lame excuses they gave the Prophet ﷺ to the movements, to the believers who went with him. So they make those excuses. They try to convince them why they did not go. And, uh, you know, because whatever, this problem, that problem, you understand. Don't you understand? You know, I really had the intention to go, but I could not go. I was really sincere, but I couldn't go because of whatever reason they will be giving these believers. We were sincere, but I was not able to go. قل لا تعتذروا لن نؤمن لكم قد نبأنا الله من أخباركم O Prophet and O Muslims you tell them don't make excuses لا تعتذروا don't make excuses لن نؤمن لكم we will not believe in you we will not believe what you are saying why قد نبأنا الله من أخباركم Indeed, Allah had informed us about you. Revelations were revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet recited the revelations and it was made very plain and clear that you, Munafiqs, did not go because Allah exposed you. He exposed each one of you. He informed us with the real news, with your news. Allah speaks the truth. قُلْ صَدَقَ اللَّهِ Allah never lies. So we believe Allah. So there is no reason to make excuses. وَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ And Allah will see what you are doing. And also the messenger. Allah will see your deeds. And so will his messenger. Meaning all the future deeds. Whatever you would do in the future, it will become known to Allah. And the messenger, he's with you. He will see what you are doing. So don't come to us. And, and give us excuses. Leave us alone. You have to please Allah and His Messenger. It doesn't matter to, whether you give excuses to us or not. Persons that you need to please is not us. They are Allah and His Messenger. So Allah will see what you will do after that. And then after that, you will be returning back to the knower of the unseen and the seen. Alim al ghayb Who is Alim al ghayb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows everything. He knows the unseen. He knows what we don't know. But he knows also the world of the witness. This world. The, the world that we witness. The world that we see. The, the seen. Allah knows that. So you will be returning back to him. فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ So he will inform you about all the things that you used to do here on earth. سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ Just like the munafiqs would give false oaths, those الْمُعَذِّرُونَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ Those Bedouin desert Arabs who were making excuses, they will also use that strategy. They will swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ إِذَنْ قَلَبْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ لِتُعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ They will swear by Allah to you. When you turn to them, so you ignore them, you leave them alone. فَعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ So leave them alone, O Muslims. Leave them. Don't, don't entertain them. إِنَّهُمْ رِجْسٌ They are rigs. They are filth. Their aqeedah is polluted. They don't have pure aqeedah. They are not pure. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْسِبُونَ And their final abode is the hell. Is the hell fire. Is jahannam. This is a recompense for that which they have earned. For what they have earned. بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْسِبُونَ You see, this is... This is the meaning of kasb. You know, we have this earning, earning. We oftentimes use the word kasb or earning to earn money. And it may be in one or two places in the Quran is mentioned in that regards. But in most cases in the Quran, 
the word kasb is used to earning either a good deed or a bad deed. And in this case here, وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Their recompense is Jahannam based on what they have earned, the evil deeds that they have committed. And they earned wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَحْلِفُونَ لَكُمْ لِتَرْضَوْ عَنْهُمْ they swear by Allah to you, so you believe them. They swear by Allah. Wallahi, billahi, let me tell you. So you may be happy with them and pleased with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said no. They don't want you to boycott them. They don't want you to leave them alone. They want you to be with them and console them and tell you, no, yeah, you're right. So you are happy. And you know, it, it, it is possible that some of those uh, have relatives in Medina maybe or somewhere. And uh, you know, they don't want the, to sever the relations with their relatives. So they start to make all these excuses and try to bring, you know, the, the family together if uh, they're talking with relatives. يَحْلِفُونَ لَكُمْ لِتَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ فَإِنْ تَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ Here's what Allah is saying now. If you were to be happy with them, if you are pleased with them, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ This is it. You may be happy and pleased with them. Allah is not happy with them. They are uh, rebellious people. They are fasiq. They are transgressors. Allah knows. He's not going to be happy with them. Just like when he said to the munafiqeen of Al-Madina, أَسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ أَوْ لَمْ you may ask, O Prophet, forgiveness for them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those munafiqeen of al Madina. Whether you ask for forgiveness for them or you don't, it doesn't matter. Allah had already decided He's not going to forgive them, period, the end. Same thing here. They want that you are happy and pleased with them. Allah is not going to be happy with them. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ الْأَعْرَبُ أَشَدْ كُفْرًا وَنِفَاقًا that's, that's pretty stern. That's pretty heavy. These Bedouins, the desert Arabs, الْأَعْرَاب They are, as I said, there, there are of two types. The, the munafiqeen are of two types. Or rather, not al-munafiqeen, the, the, the a'rab or the Arabs, there are those who lived in cities, in Mecca, in Medina, Yathrib used to be called before the Prophet uh, came and it was renamed to be the city of the Prophet, Al-Madina, Al-Ta'if, and so many other places, Jeddah and so on and so forth. Those are cities. Arabs lived there. But outside of that, Arab, Bedouin, Arabs lived scattered everywhere. And when Islam was established, when Islam became the religion of this whole area of Arabia after the conquest of Mecca, when the victory, when the help of Allah arrived and you would see people entering into Islam in droves from every region, from everywhere, so those are the Arab, the Bedouin Arabs who were scattered around those cities. They also, and some of them joined Islam, actually, maybe, perhaps, they were not maybe munafiq, munafiq, but some of them maybe joined Islam for fear of losing their properties and losing themselves. Because at that time, Muhammad became supreme, sallallahu alayhi wa and Islam became supreme, and they didn't know what to make out of it. So to be safe, they joined Islam. This is why the ayah from Surah Al-Hujurat, قَالَتْ لَعَعْرَابُ أَمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Those Bedouin Arabs, they said, we surrender, we, we believe, we believe. They said, we believe. They came to the Prophet ﷺ and they told the Prophet that we are mu'min now, we believe just like you. قُلْ Allah, this is... One instance where Allah informed the Prophet about what is in the hearts of those Bedouin Arabs. Allah knew that they had no Iman. 
real iman. They had only lip service. They, they, iman, legal iman. Only ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. But real iman in the heart, they did not have that. That's why Allah said to the Prophet, قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا Tell them, you have not yet come to have real faith. وَلَكِنْ قُولُ أَسْلَمْنَا On the other hand, say that we have submitted to the supremacy of Islam. We have submitted to Allah and His Messenger. We have become legal Muslims. That's it. So, in the same way, you find that those Arab, the ones who are scattered around those big cities who became Muslims, some of them were fierce disbelievers and munafiks. Al-A'rabu ashaddu kufran wa nifaqa. You will find from among those Bedouin Arabs some who have intense kufr and also nifaq. And this is, you know, disbelief and uh, hypocrisy. وَأَجْدَرُوا أَلَّا يَعْلَمُوا حُدُودَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ It would be more befitting that they know the limits of Allah, but it's more likely that they wouldn't know the limits Allah sent upon His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. والله عليم حكيم And Allah is all-knowing. He is all-wise. And, and why is that? This is a very important point. You know, as I mentioned, those Bedouin Arabs, at least the ones who maybe are sincere but don't have the Iman, this is because, you know, those Bedouin Arabs, most of them, all of them actually, the, 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 the desert Arabs, did not live with the Prophet ﷺ. Like the Mu'mins, the believers in Medina, those who were with him in, uh, you know, Mecca, and then they migrated to al Medina with him, and he established a community. So the Sahaba, the companions who were with him, they would hear the Prophet ﷺ. They would uh, listen to his uh, Friday sermons and so on and so forth. He would recite to the congregation, to the community, the new revelations that he would receive from, the, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these Bedouin Arabs missed these blessings, the barakah, the other companions had with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They embraced Islam, but they lived far away. وَمِنَ الْعَرَابِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ مَغْرَمًا وَيَتَرَبَّصُ بِكُمُ الدَّوَائِرِ And of those desert Arabs, Bedouin Arabs, you find uh, some of them who would consider what they pay to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in terms of sadaqat and zakat as a fine. They don't didn't consider it you see, this is the disease of these hypocrites, is that they're so much attached to, to the world and to, to you know, uh, money and wealth, and they don't want to spend. And again, because they were not with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and were purified, their hearts were purified like the others, they accepted Islam, but they're not really ready to give. So what they think is, oh, this money that we give, it's like fine. And that's, again, because the real faith, Iman, was not there, has not yet reached their hearts, although they know that zakat is one of the pillars of Islam. You have to pay zakat. It doesn't matter whether you are a Bedouin Muslim or a Muslim who lives anywhere. You have to have uh, the understanding, and since you submit it, you have to uh, pay two and a half percent. Uh, he or she uh, will have to pay two and a half percent of everything you have if you meet uh, the nisab. So uh, this baraka of learning from the Prophet and the companions was not there to, to, to help them understand and help them purify themselves. So they think whatever they give as a penalty. And in addition to that, and they watch for calamities that will afflict the Muslims, the believers. Actually, they would wish that maybe there will be another expedition and they will be defeated and this way they don't have to pay anymore. 
But what happened? Alayhim da'irat al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, On them, the calamity of evil. On them, they will be afflicted by calamity. On them will be the evil turning of events. And it will come, on the other hand, uh, the glory, the glory was to Allah and his messenger and to the believers and to Islam. Islam was established. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ The izzah, the honor is to Allah and to his messenger and to the believers. But they don't understand. They don't know. Yeah. وَيَتَرَبَّصُ بِكُمُ الدَّوَائِرَ عَلَيْهِمْ دَائِرَةُ السَّوْءِ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ And indeed, Allah is all hearing, all knowing. He sees everything. He hears everything. He knows everything. No one can fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخَرِ Now, this ayah is very important. We need to understand that not all Bedouin Arabs were munafiks. Some of them were good believers, but their iman was weak. But they cannot be compared to those muadhiruna min al-a'rab who gave excuses to the Prophet not to go, those munafiks of the a'rab. So from among them, you will find those a'rab who really had faith, uh, who had full faith in Allah and in the last day. So, وَمِنَ الْعَرَابِ مَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخَرِ You will find from among them such people who truly have faith, who believe in Allah and in the last day. وَيَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ قُرُبَاتٍ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And whatever he, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, gets from them, whatever he receives from them, it is a means of getting them nearer and nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, they are, they are those people who will spend willingly, lovingly, happily for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know giving zakat, giving charity and sadaqat will only bring them closer to Allah. So they will give. وَيَتَّخِذُوا مَا يُنْفِقُ قُرُبَاتٍ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ He takes from them that which brings them close to Allah. وَصَلَوَاتِ الرَّسُولِ and also a means, you know, giving in the path of Allah, particularly when they were with the Prophet ﷺ, it was a means of getting the blessings of the Prophet himself, the Messenger of Allah. وَصَلَوَاتِ Rasul. أَلَا إِنَّهَا قُرْبَةٌ لَهُمْ Let it be known truly that it is going to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, their deeds... They're giving in the path of Allah, they're giving their zakah, their sadaqat is going to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَيُدْخِلُهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit them to his mercy. Allah will be merciful to them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Verily, Allah is forgiving, merciful. وَالصَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Now this is a very important section. We have few ayat here, seven ayat to cover. And those ayat are extremely important to all believers. Because these ayat, this section, gives us the classifications of Muslims at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is also important because in this day and age particularly, whenever there is a call for Islam, for a movement to revive Islam, the response of the people initially and after will correspond to the responses of the companions who joined his mission. So it is very important, particularly for any jama'ah that is organized solely on the basis to revive the deen and Islam. A call is made by the caller. Now let's see who is going to come initially, who will accept initially 
and who will hold back and wait and see what is going to happen. Is this organization going to succeed? If it does, and if we see these people who were the first one wants to, to, to become part of this jama'ah, then we will be part of that. And if something happens and fails, we'll just stay back. And, and this is exactly what happened, and those are the same classifications you find at the time of the Prophet And this is similar, you know, just to have a deep insight on this subject, consider the ayah from Surah An-Nisa. وَمَا يُطْعِ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger. فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصُدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسْمَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا In this ayah we have four classifications in Surah An-Nisa, which we already studied. Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, they are the ones whom Allah had blessed. The classifications are, number one, the prophets. Then right after the prophets, next to them, as siddiqeen the truthful ones. Next to them, as shuhada the martyrs. And next to them are as salihin the righteous people. Now, of all those four classifications, the first one is, cannot be acquired. The first one is Allah's prerogative. He chooses from among the people, who to be a prophet, who to be a messenger. So really, there are only three classifications for us to compare to, you know, those classifications. Siddiqeen, this is at the highest level, the truthful ones. Abu Bakr Siddiq, he immediately accepted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the prophet and messenger of Allah, did not hesitate a moment. He is at the highest level, highest martaba. And then, of course, the martyrs, which I already talked about, and, of course, the righteous people. So you have these three levels. This ayah that we are studying here right now discusses five classifications, the topmost being as-sabiqoon al-awwaloon, min al-muhajirin wal-ansar, the first ones that came into Islam from among the immigrants and the helpers. والذين, and the second, next to them, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ Those who follow them with ihsan. So you have these two levels at the high, highest level, and then at the lowest level you have the munafiqs, the munafiqeen. Now in between these two levels, there are two levels, two martabas. One that is closest to the lowest, and one that is closest to the upper level. So you have the middle levels that are upper, middle, and lower middle, if you will. And all of those are mentioned in this Al-Ayah Al-Mubarakah. Let us study it and find out who they are and where we fit in these categories. So, وَالصَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ and the foremost to embrace Islam from the Muhajireen and the Ansar. Who are the Muhajireen? The Muhajireen are obviously those who immigrated with the Prophet ﷺ from Mecca to Al Madina, and they were no more than 114. Some figures say 114, some say 120, 124, Allahu Ta'ala A'lam. But they were very few. Those were the foremost, the initial companions who were with the Prophet ﷺ. But not only them, also Al-Ansar. You know, when, when the people of Medina heard of the Prophet ﷺ, they made an effort to meet up with him in a place called Al-Aqaba. He took from them a bay'a, a two bay'ahs, Bay'at Al-Aqaba Al-Ula and Bay'at Al-Aqaba Al-Thaniya. And then they invited him to come to Medina. And the whole town, after sending Mus'ab bin Umair, as a teacher, to teach them the Qur'an after one year. He went there, and the, the, the community, many of the uh, Medina community had embraced Islam by that time, and those are called Al-Ansar, the helpers, the helpers. So, وَالصَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ So that's at the highest level. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ And then after them, 
those who followed them with excellence, if you will, with ihsan, with the best of intention, the best way. In other words, with the same zeal and conviction, they had exactly the same conviction, ihsan. Radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. Now, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah is well pleased with them and they are well pleased with him. And this is the highest level one can achieve. This is the status of mutual pleasure. Allah is pleased with their iman and their deeds, with their sacrifices, the sacrifices they made for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the struggle they had to uh, go through in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They lived and died as true mu'min, as true Muslim. And that is not easy, by the way. So they strove very hard to establish Allah's deen, his kingdom of heaven on earth. Some sacrificed their lives. They gave their lives. Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, did not even live to see Islam. Mus'ab bin Umayr did not live to see Islam. They gave their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They dedicated their entire lives for the cause of Allah. Actually, they deprived themselves from the pleasures of this world, the luxuries and amenities of this world. They were fully aware that this worldly place, this world is only a passing phase, and our real abode is Jannah, is paradise. So they sold themselves for paradise. وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارُ He prepared for those people gardens beneath which rivers flow and they will be dwelling there forever. This is the perpetual bliss. This is these are the people who are wise. These are the people who understood that the abode of the hereafter is indeed the real life, not this world. So they gave everything for the sake of Allah for that. That's why I say, and this surah will discuss in Allah ishtara min al mu'minina anfusam wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al jannah. So this is what this ayah is saying. A'adda lahum jannatin tajri tahta al-anhar. Because they gave everything, sacrifice for him. He prepared gardens beneath which rivers flow beneath. Khalidina fiha abada, perpetual bliss. They will be living there forever and ever and ever. They will have rivers of wine, milk and honey, virgin maidens, palaces, silk clothes, gold and silver and on and on. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Indeed, this is the greatest success. It's not that you become wealthy here in this world. It's not that you attain fame and you become famous in this world. No, the real success is when you achieve this desire to live perpetually in a place where you are happy forever. This world here is a temporary place for us. This is not the real place. So these are the two topmost levels. والصادقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين تبعوهم بإحسان. Now this is the مرتبة of ولاية, if you will, the مرتبة of mutual ولاية. As we have in سورة البقرة, الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور. Allah is the ولي, He is the protector. And is the friend of those people who believe. They, he takes them out of darkness into light. <laughs> Truly, the awliya of Allah, the people, the, the, the protectors of Allah, and the friends of Allah, there can be no fear upon them, nor shall grieve. Now, who are protectors of Allah, the protectors of his deen, the protectors of, they protected themselves, they remained within the limits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set for them, and they were the friends of Allah, 
they abided by Allah's commands and His Messenger, and they lived a dignified life of, full of Iman. This is mutual wilaya, and in the same way, we have here mutual pleasure. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. So now, after describing these two levels, now the other two levels. The lowest level, as I mentioned, the hypocrites. Those are the legal Muslims, but really they are kuffar at the very bottom. And next to them, upward, وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ And from around you, the desert Arabs, these are munafiqs, they are hypocrites. And also, وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ And also in the city of the Prophet, al Madina, there are munafiqs. مَرَضُوا عَلَى النِّفَاقِ They persisted on nifaq. Their hearts hardened, so to say. Their hearts were infected with diseases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them many times. Warning after warning. And they had a chance. Chance after chance that Allah will forgive them. But they persisted on nifaq. لا تعلمهم نحن نعلمهم. You don't know who they are, O Prophet. You know some of them, but we didn't tell you all of them. We know them. نحن نعلمهم. سنعذبهم مرتين ثم يردون إلى عذاب عظيم. We shall chastise them twice. We shall punish them twice, marratain. ثم يردون إلى عذاب عظيم, and then they will return to the greatest punishment. So, what is this marratain? The ulama and the mufassirin have explained because the last part is they will be returning to a very severe punishment. This is the punishment of the hellfire on the day of judgment. But what is marratain? Marratain, sanwaadhibuhum twice. We will inflict punishment on them twice, once in this world. خزيون في الحياة الدنيا Humiliation in this world. We're going to expose them. We're going to humiliate them. We're going to make them suffer. We're going to make all of these children and wealth become a fitna for them. This is the adab of this world. This is one. عليهم دائرة السوء as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we just read on them be the calamity of evil here in this world and the second is the torment of the grave there are references in the Quran the Quran is silent pretty much on the adab al-qabr the punishment of the grave but we have many ahadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa talks about adab al-qabr so this is the second adab. We have in Surah Al-Furqan, actually, regarding those who commit major sins. يضعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانة So this is similar. The, the punishment will be double for them. And on the day of judgment, they will remain in hell humiliated. So this is similar. سنعذبهم مرتين ثم يردون إلى عذاب عظيم so they will be punished in this world and then in the grave. And finally, they will be punished in the hereafter in Jahannam. Now, the, the lowest level and the two levels and two levels in between. One closer to the munafiqeen and the other one closer to the believers. Those who are permanently weak in faith, but they are not munafiqs. Those are the upper middle and the lower middle. At the lower middle, we have the ayah that talks about them. وَآخَرُونَ اَعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا And there are others who confess their sins. Now this is the difference between a real munafiq and a Muslim with a weak iman. A Muslim with a weak iman will commit sins, will err, will, will, will make mistakes, but will confess and say, Oh Allah, I did this wrong, and I messed up here, and I sinned here. He or she will not falsely swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that 
like those conscious munafiq. So as long as a Muslim is confessing his or her weakness and come to the Prophet ﷺ to ask for forgiveness, to ask him to ask Allah for forgiveness for them, then they are at least, they have hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although they resemble the munafiq, they did not go to, to the expedition, they held back. But they confess, they admit their faults. They mix doing good deeds and doing bad deeds. They mix the good and the bad deeds. It's possible that Allah we will forgive them. He will turn toward them with mercy and forgive them. Inna Allah Rahim. Indeed, Allah is forgiving. He is merciful. So those people have hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is possible that he will forgive them and turn to them in mercy. In addition to this hope, a prescription is given to them and that is very important, particularly for Muslims today. Muslims today have weak faith. I can't say that they are munafiq. I can't say that they are conscious munafiq. Maybe we have some that are conscious munafiq. I can't tell who they are. Even if they act like ones, I cannot say that they are conscious munafiq, but I can assure you that Muslims today, the majority, have such weak faith that we are in a state of absolute humiliation. So what do we do? What is the prescription? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a medicine for that. Just like, you know, when you are sick, when your resistance is low, what do you do? You take medicine until your resistance is, is high, until your immune system can take those diseases. Similarly, if your iman is not strong, is not enough, you are liable to catch the infection of nifaq, of the diseases of nifaq. So, the prescription is خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ Take from them, O Prophet, sadaqah. Take from them money, sadaqah, zakat, because that is the cure for their weak faith. Let them give you. Let them spend. It will purify them. It will make them grow in faith. Zakah, yuzakki, is to grow. And you know, the word zakat comes from sadaqat. Sadaqat is charity. And zakat is purification of the soul. So giving is a source for increasing their faith. Purification of the soul. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ And send your blessings upon them, O Prophet. Why? Because inna salataka sakanul lahum, because your salah is a, is a solace to them. Sakanul lahum, wallahu sami'un alim, and indeed Allah is all hearing, all knowing. He knows everything. And now the last, the lower level, and I will end with that. I will not dwell on it because we have passed our time. But uh, so we talked about the uppermost level, the two levels, as sadiquna al awwalun min al muhajirin wal ansar, wal ladina tabaahum bi ihsan, highest two levels. And then lowest level, you have the munafiqeen. In between, we have two levels. The upper level, closest to the upper level, are those who have weak faith. And now, the lower middle that is closest to to the munafiqeen is وَآخَرُونَ مُرْجَوْنَ لِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ إِمَّا يُعَذِّبُهُمْ وَإِمَّا يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ And others are made to await for Allah's decree. Whatever Allah decides. Whether He will punish them or He will forgive them. It is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the lower middle that is closest to the conscious munafiqs. The matter now is with Allah. If He wills, He will punish them because He knows their intent. At least with the other ones, the upper middle, they were sincere. 
they confess their sins. Those maybe they did, maybe they didn't, maybe they are, you know, they are closer to, to the other munafiqeen. This is this matter is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he wants to, he will forgive them. If not, he will punish them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alim Hakim. He knows and he ends this discourse with Hakim. He is all wise. He will never deal with anyone on the day of judgment unjustly. He is wise. Al Aziz al Hakim, the one in authority, but at the same time, all wise. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته